as you settle into your child's pose, feel yourself curling up, feeling your, feel your, the open of your, um, your whole back, feel the spine elongate. Start to really sink into yourself. Have your eyes closed. Allow yourself to arrive here on this Monday morning. Feel yourself curled in, almost like a seed. Almost like a seed um, manifesting for what it's going to blossom into. We'll be here for a couple more breaths. Child's pose is also known as balasana, but also known as resting warrior. Even warriors need time to rest, slow down, turn off a bit, and tune in, curl into yourself. It is said in yoga philosophy that we give love through the front of our heart and receive love through the back. So this is a nice gesture to always start your week, start your practice, start your day off, maybe in a child's pose. Tuning in, finding that love for yourself before offering it to the world. Take a deep breath in through our nose. Open your mouth and sigh it out. If your arms are not stretched out in front of you, do that now. So we'll stay low in like a child's pose, but with our arms in front. And then just start to walk your hands over to the left side of your body. With them reaching, maybe you can stack your right hand over your left and let your chin tuck, relax your head. Just feel a nice stretch in that right side. If you can, keep squaring your shoulders to the earth. Keep breathing into the space between the right ribs. Inhale deeply. Then exhale, sigh it out. Start to walk your hands back to center. And then make your way over to your right side. Maybe you stack the left hand on top of the right. Feel like you're reaching. As you press into the right palm, feel that left sits bone tuck, um, sit right back on top of that left heel. Keep reaching, feeling space into that left side. Letting the head get heavy. Sending your exhales to your low back. Take a deep inhale through the nose together. And exhale, sigh it out. Start to walk your hands back towards center. And then with your blocks here, we'll come to our knees. We'll stack your knees over underneath your um, hips. Stack your knees be below your hips and then grab your blocks and then place your blocks where your hands would be. So about shoulder width distance apart. 
And then we'll come into this praying mantis pose. So place your elbows on the blocks. You can have them parallel to each other, or you can play around and see what they're like, you know, within like a V shape. So you'll place your elbows here and then start to sink your heart to the earth. Maybe bring your hands into prayer overhead. Maybe you start to bow your head. Once you start to sink and open the armpits, bow your head. Let the hands kind of fall towards the back of the neck. Keeping the tops of the feet on the floor. And your hips are high. You have a nice curve, like a back bend curve in your back here, in your spine. Continuing to bow to the earth, letting the heart sink. Almost protecting the heart and receiving the love through the back. Keep breathing here. We'll ease into this class. Feeling the inhales enter through the crown of the head. And then feeling the exhales just wash over the body like a wave. As you look down, maybe you can open your eyes and imagine the exhales leaving the tips of your toes. Take a deep inhale here and exhale, sigh. can start to pour weight into the elbows, lift yourself up. If you can, stay in this um, virasana. So if you can keep your, your heels beneath your sit bones, maybe slide a block beneath, between your heels, and then you can sit on the edge of the block. We won't be here long, but it'll be more comfortable than sitting right on your feet. So if you can see, I have a block between my heel, heels on a, like a medium height, and then I'm just sitting on the edge. I know I feel so far away, but I can see you, so that's great. <laughs> so I'll sit here nice and tall. If you can let your eyes close, let them shut. And then we'll just roll the shoulders up by the ears. Take a big inhale. Then exhale, roll the shoulders back and down. Let's do that one more time. Squeeze the shoulders by the ears with a big inhale. Then exhale, roll them down. Start to settle in here a little bit. Feel lifted through the, through the ear tips. Let the palms of the hands just rub on the thighs, finding a comfortable spot to land. Coming inward. Realizing that you are here, you are present, you are on your mat. And there are no other distractions. You are not in yesterday. You're staying out of tomorrow, staying out of the rest of the week. And you're here in this moment. We'll start this rest of the practice off with the one sound of an ohm. Feel free to join me in spirit. Feel free to just listen, but try not to disconnect from the energy, from the vibration. Try to stay present, stay here. Feel the, the, the sound and let it resonate with you in some way. Ohm is supposed to be a representation of each moment. Each moment is so fresh and new. We've never experienced this moment before. So by chanting Ohm, it gives us that satisfaction. It, it doesn't allow us to take advantage of each moment. So let's gather our hands at heart center, lift our heart, bow our head, 
And we'll take a deep inhale here together. Uh, you can relax your hands back down. Start to cultivate an ujjayi breath if you'd like. We won't be moving at a fast pace, but sometimes it's nice to have an audible sound guide you through your practice today. You can keep your eyes closed or flutter them open. And we'll sweep our arms out and up with a big inhale, reach them overhead, allow the palms to touch, and then retrieve the right wrist with the left hand and just lift up through that right palm. So we're lifting up here, yes, there you go. And we'll lift up, elongate the spine, and then lean to the left. Just for a moment, we did stretch out the side body already. So we'll just lean to the left, opening the right side, send the gaze to the sky. And then on your next inhale, lift back up, and then we'll twist to the right. So bring the left hand to the right thigh, and then let the right hand, either fingertips to the mat, or you can have the right hand at the low back. Can you hear me okay? I put the headphones in, okay, I just wanna make sure. You can have your right hand rest on your low back, maybe on the block. Let your collarbones fan out. Send your gaze over your right shoulder. And again, feel like you're being lifted through your ear tips. Take a deep breath in. Keep twisting, opening the shoulders, lifting the heart, sending the left ribs up and over. If you can, on your inhales, lift a little higher and then on your exhales, maybe you can twist a little deeper, sending your gaze further past your right shoulder. And then before we unwind, let's place our our hand, the palm on the mat, fully behind us. Place your right hand on that palm, lean back, and then with an inhale, we'll, we'll sweep the left hand up and lift the hips. So it's almost like you have a puppet string on your left middle finger connected to your hips. So just lift up here. Again, nice open stretch. We're gonna start to move with the breath here. Inhale to lift, and then exhale, sit the sit bones back down, switch sides, bring the left hand behind you, and then the right arm will come up. So we'll move with the breath. Inhale to lift, and then exhale, we'll switch sides. So then the right hand will be behind us, and the left hand comes up. So we're coming into this like windmill shape like this, and then we'll Exhale, bring the left hand behind us and the right hand lifts with the hips. And then switch with the breath. Inhale to lift, exhale down, left hand behind us, right arm and hips lift. Exhale down and switch. So we'll end again with the left arm lifted, right arm behind us. And then we'll come back down, sit back down, facing forward. Maybe we can let our eyes close a little bit, finding center. And then we'll sweep the arms out and up, take the left wrist with the right fingers, press the left palm away, and then lean to the right. Keeping that left sit bone grounded. Spin the gaze past the arm and lean a little further to the right. And then we'll come back up and twist to the left, bringing the right hand to the left thigh, left hand behind us, either fingertips to the mat or left hand to the low back. Again, I like to use my block, kind of allows myself to open up a little more. And the collarbones. 
feel the right arm, arm the right, or the right shoulder kind of actually pulling away and opening that armpit to then hopefully open your chest a little more and deepen your inhales and your exhales. Send the gaze past the left shoulder. Keep breathing deeply. And then we'll, we won't unwind yet. Let's place the left palm to the mat behind us and we're gonna move with the breath again. So we'll inhale to lift the hips and lift the right arm up. Opening the heart, feeling elegant here. Really feeling open. Maybe we roll out the wrists in this, in this time. Roll out the wrists, make the hand into a fist, scrunch the fingers, take a deep inhale, and then exhale, settle the hips down and switch sides. Bring the right hand behind you, lift the left arm with the hip. And we'll do the same thing here. Roll out the wrists, scrunch the fingers into a fist. Take as much time as you need. Then we'll take another big inhale. And then exhale, come down and switch sides once more. Left hand behind, right arm lifts with the hips. Start to move with the breath, exhale down. Inhale up with the left arm. Exhale down, left arm grounds, right arm lifts. We'll stay here and then exhale let the hips settle and come back to this virasana. So we'll come to hands and knees. I have a kitty in the way. Move the blocks or whatever props you have out of the way. Stack the wrists beneath the shoulders, stack the knees beneath the hips. Spread the fingers out wide. Let the tops of the feet come to the mat. Find some movement before you find stillness here. So maybe you sway the hips back and forth. Let's stretch the right leg out behind us and just rock back and forth on the ball of the foot. We were kind of crunched up for a little bit. Roll that out. And then replace that knee back down. Stretch the left leg long behind us. Roll back and forth on the ball of the foot. Feeling the toe stretch, the sole of the foot open. And then we'll come back to hands and knees like a tabletop position. Puff up through the shoulder blades. And then we'll start to move with the breath through cat and cow. So we'll begin to lift the hips, drop the belly, lift the gaze, open the collarbones and inhale for cow pose. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, round the spine, release the head between the shoulders for cat pose. Inhale to lift the hips, sink the belly, fan the collarbones wide. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, press through the palms as you lift through the shoulder blades, hollowing out the abdomen. Inhale to lift for cow. Exhale, curling in, Emptying out completely with cat. <sighs> Inhale to lift with your gaze. Open your shoulders. Let the tips of the shoulder blades touch. Then exhale, curling in, pressing the floor away from you. And then add any gentle movement that might feel good to you like tuck the toes and then send the hips back to one heel. Coming back up, sending them back to the other heel. Whatever you choose to do, move with intention. Intentionally move with an inhale, stick to that movement, then wait till the exhale arrives to move next, to switch it up. Continuing to send the breath deep into the lungs and then emptying out everything, not leaving any stale breath at the bottom of the lungs. On your next inhale, come to a neutral spine. 
Again, puffing up through the shoulder blades, pressing all 10 fingertips into the mat. We'll stretch the right leg long behind us once more, and then we're gonna lift the, the leg. Point the toes this time, scrunch the feet, or I'm sorry, scrunch the toes, roll out the ankle with the leg lifted. And then we'll bend the knee and bring the knee out, the leg out to the side, like almost like a dog at a fire hydrant, and then we'll roll out the hip. Roll it one way. Again, keeping the weight distributed in both of the hands evenly. And then roll the leg out the other way. Keep breathing here. And then we'll come to a pause, keep the leg lifted, press the, the sole of the foot away, so towards the sky. And then we'll exhale, step or place the foot between the thumbs coming into this low lunge. Find your lunge here, feel it out, sink the left thigh, press the right shin forward, and then we'll climb our hands up to our right thigh, so above the knee. Lengthen your arms away, open the chest, open the heart, and then really feel the top of the left thigh sink forward and down. Lifting up through the heart. Just moving around, feeling this, feeling the stretch in the left hip. Wish I was good with the ligaments and I could remember what exactly is connected here. And then we'll release the left hand inside of the right foot and keep the right hand to the right thigh. Spin the left ribs towards the left thigh and then reach with the right arm to the sky. So we're in a little lunging twist. If you'd like, you can start to reach the right arm behind you. And then maybe you take a nice windmill and open up the shoulder here. So I'm windmilling the right arm. As you continue to press the right shin forward, and then roll your arm the other way. Maybe you make it intentional and you lift with the inhale and then come down with the exhale. Roll out the elbow, make some weird movements, <laughs> making sure to get into every, every part of the body, every intersection there is. And then we'll lift our right arm straight up. And then if you can, bend that left knee. If you bend that left knee and let the left foot come up, maybe you can reach behind you to hold on to that foot or ankle. If you do this, send your gaze over, wherever you are, you can send your gaze over your right shoulder up towards the sky and allow your left side to sink a little further, a little deeper. And then release that left foot and we'll frame the right foot and come back to a tabletop position. Come back to all fours. Feel that, feel how that feels. Maybe you wanna close your eyes and, and maybe ask some questions or just see what you notice. Sway your hips, find where any of the sensation might have traveled. And the questions you might ask, you know, just why, why do I feel that way? Why am I feeling it there? And don't search for the answers, just let them come if they do. And then we'll stretch our left leg long behind us. We'll lift that leg this time. Roll out the ankle. Flex the foot, point the toes. Keeping the weight evenly through the hands. And then we'll bend that left knee and again, bring it out to the side and roll out the hip. Roll it one way and then the other. And then we'll keep the knee bent and lifted. Bring the sole of the foot so that it's like you're stamping the ceiling. 
lift it up with a big inhale, and then exhale, step the left foot, or just place it with your hands next to your left thumb. Find your little lunge. Don't just get there and pause. Really settle, feel it. Allow your right thigh to sink. Feel all four corners of the left foot grounded. So maybe you play around with that, feel what it's like to you know, put more of the weight on the pinky side of the foot. What it feels like to put it on the big toe side of the foot. And then we're gonna climb our hands onto the top of our thigh, left thigh. So coming up, stretching the arms away from us allows us to sink the right thigh a little deeper. Lifting the heart. Pressing that left shin forward. Really wakening that right hip. So maybe you just kind of move around a little, get some juice, some lubricant in there. And then we'll lower our right hand, keep our left, our left hand on the thigh, swivel the right ribs towards the thigh, and then inhale to lift that left arm for a little lunging twist. Pouring weight in the right hand, we'll roll out the left wrist, roll the fingers, and then we'll windmill that left arm. Reaching the arm back to really open up the chest. Be dramatic with this. Don't just do it, but really feel it. Feel how the arm, the upper arm plugs in as you reach with the fingers. And then we'll roll the other way. Feeling that ball and socket movement, getting some energy, any stuck energy that was in there, letting it release. And then we'll pause, reach up. And again, maybe you bend that right leg, bend the right knee, and then go and search for the foot or ankle. And that might allow you to open your chest a little more, send the gaze to the sky, feel that right thigh, the top of the right thigh, sinking forward and down. Release, we'll frame the front foot and then step it back to um, all fours. Step it back to um, like a tabletop. We'll walk the hands about a handprint forward, tuck the toes, and then send the hips back. So this time we're going to put a nice stretch in the soles of the feet. So really, again, press through the right, the palms of the hands, plugging in the upper arms as you reach. So you're constantly having these pulls of opposites. As you press through the palms, your sits bones might be able to go a little deeper and you can feel the stretch in the feet. And then start to peel yourself up with your hands still forward of the shoulders. Keep the toes tucked and then slowly with intention, very slowly make it your way to downward facing dog. Maybe you lift with one leg with the other one bent. Straighten the other leg. So give your dog a nice walk here. For a moment in your downward facing dog with your hands about shoulder width distance apart, hips, feet about hip width distance apart. We'll rise up to our, the balls of our feet Put a nice bend in your legs, feel your belly rest on your thighs, and then lift your sits bones higher to the sky, and then lengthen your legs. So let the heels go back and down. Now I really can't feel, I really can't ground my heels. <laughs> feel a nice stretch in the hamstrings, sway back and forth. Letting this passive inversion do, do what it does. Give us our benefits. We're never upside down like this in any way. 
So this upside down V gives us a good, some good benefits, even if it's just the passing pose. We'll rise to the balls of the feet and then take a slow stroll, toe to heel up towards the front of the mat. Arrive with the feet hip width distance apart and then fold forward. Hold on to opposite wrists or opposite elbows. Come into a rag doll. Really let your head get heavy. Allow the weight to, to travel to the balls of the feet. Maybe even interlace your fingers and let them rest at the base of the skull. Try to get your head a little heavier. With a slight bend in your knees, feel your hips rise a little higher. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, sigh. Maybe you flub your lips. Make your faces, scrunch your face, open your jaw. Ah, such a great place to do this. Not only can I see you, but you can feel it. And it feels so good. Release whatever you're holding on to. Put a nice bend in the knees, tuck the chin, and then slowly roll up to stand. Allowing each bone of the spine to stack on top of each other. Once you arrive, you can step your feet maybe a little closer together or keep them hip width distance apart. With your eyes closed or a slight um, soft gaze, we'll roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Arriving here in our Tadasana mountain pose. Mm, feel so strong here. Don't just stand here, but really Feel it grounding in all four corners of the feet, feeling the arches rise, feel that like a, a flame to the feet, and then let that fire rise to the calves. So engaging the calf muscles, and then feeling the kneecaps lift as you engage the quadriceps, the thigh muscles. As your shoulders open, or maybe our palms come forward, feeling our heart lift, Feeling the spine long and curvy. Taking deep breaths here. Now we're gonna take another um, good morning side stretch. So with balance, we're gonna pour weight into, um, let's do our left foot, pour weight into the left foot, and then we'll kind of swivel the right foot behind us. But make sure you can get the whole sole of the foot down if that's comfortable. And then we'll lift the arms out and up. And then again, retrieve the, or hold on to the right wrist with the left fingers. Lift up through the palms, and then we'll come into this like banana shape. We'll lean to the left. So lean to the left, feeling the opening. Nice. Lifting the heart. Getting that side stretch. Maybe kind of move around a little. Do these weird movements. Whatever feels good. Find what feels good to you. It's just you and I. And then we'll come back up to so replace the feet back where they were and just shake that out. Feel a little bit um, in my right shoulder. Shake that out. And then we'll pour weight in the right foot. Swivel that left foot behind in some way. Maybe it's behind to the right a little. And then inhale, lift the arms up, framing the ears. Take hold of the left wrist with the right fingers. Press away through the left palm and then lean to the right, coming into this again banana C shape. <sighs> Beautiful. We'll unwind, release, shake it out. And then we'll come back into our Tadasana. With a slight bend in our knees, we'll move through our widest wingspan and inhale, sweep the arms out and up, palms press overhead, gaze lift, exhale, fold deeply in half, coming into your Tadasana, folding at the waist. Let's inhale halfway up, palms to shins, collarbones wide, neck is soft, 
and then exhale, fold deeply in half again. Tucking the chin. Instead of flowing through a vinyasa, we're gonna flow through the sun salutation. So put a slight bend in your knees and inhale to lift yourself all the way up, sweeping the arms out and up, back into this Urdhva Hastasana, and then exhale, hands into prayer. Release them by your sides for Tadasana. So we're gonna move through this a couple more times. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, palms press, gaze lifts. Exhale, fold forward, drawing a line through the mid body and then folding in half. Inhale, halfway up, palms to shin, collarbones wide, pressing the thighs back. Exhale, fold with a slight bend in your knees. We'll inhale, root the feet down, rise through the fingers, lift all the way up. Exhale, hands into prayer, and then release them by your side. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Urdhva Hastasana, looking up, and then we'll exhale, fold deeply in half. Inhale, halfway up, palms to shins. Feeling the inner thighs pressing back, and then exhale, fold deeply in half. Inhale, root to rise all the way up, breathing in, deep breaths, and then exhaling to release, letting everything come back down. Last one, let's inhale, come all the way back up, palms press, gaze lift, exhale, fold in half, or Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, let the shoulder blades pinch, neck is soft, gazes forward and down, and then exhale, bend at the knees, plant the palms, and then step it back to downward facing dog. Pressing the hips up to the sky, letting the heels press back in space, back and down. We'll inhale to lift the right leg Oh, I'm sorry, what are we doing? Let's come back, let's bring our knees to the, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, lift the right leg up and back. I got lost for a second. And then exhale, step the right foot between the thumbs. And then we'll lower, once you get there, we'll lower the left knee. So I'm like, how did I get there in my plan? Untuck the toes. And then coming in this low lunge, we'll sweep the arms up by the ears, framing, framing our head. <laughs> Press the right shin forward, top of the left thigh down. Really reach again, don't just come here, but feel it. Reach through the fingertips, wrap the pinkies inward. Take a deep inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna twist to the left. So coming into this awkward, weird twist, <laughs> but it's finding a lot of balance. So we're gonna twist the other way, if you can. Do the other direction, the weird one, yeah. So send the left arm forward and the right arm back. There you go. Twisting this way, sending the gaze to the right. This feels okay, you can stay here, or you can let the right hand kind of drop behind you and let the left arm lift and twist a little this way, nice. And then you can send your gaze past your right shoulder or down. And we'll come back up, cut with the, slice the air with the right hand and lift your hands back up towards the sky. Lower the hands to frame the right foot. And then we're gonna do another like tricky thing. So let's tuck the back toes and then lift the, that back leg and then start to scoot that left foot a little closer and lengthen the right leg. So we're gonna come up to stand, but keeping our, our torso folded over. So come to stand. You want about three, three and a half feet between the feet, and then let your left toes kind of dial off of the mat. So they're not facing forward like the right foot. So we're coming into this like half parsvo kanasana. Let your torso just kind of fold over the right leg. So you should feel a nice hamstring stretch. So it's like a half pyramid pose. We're not doing the, the, the little back bend with the torso. We're just kind of letting it fold over. So tuck your chin. Let the crown of the head 
reach towards the right toes. Press that right hip back as that left hip comes slightly forward. Breathing here. You know, I'm gonna feel like you're on a balance beam. So if you need to widen your stance, do that. Let your nose come towards your, your shin. And then we're gonna lift halfway up, start to pour weight in that right foot, and then lift yourself all the way up. Oh no. Oh, and start to come into, hold on, I'm sorry. Just got interrupted, I can't see you. There you are, okay. So we'll pour weight in the right foot and we're lift that left leg to come all the way up with us and then just retrieve it with your, your left hand. So you're kind of in a balance pose, yeah, nice. But you really just kind of wanna stretch this quadricep a little bit. So maybe you move it out and in. Maybe you feel the heel of the foot come towards your buttocks. Lifting up through the ear tips. And then with the balance, we're gonna come into a tree pose. So let your sole of your foot land somewhere on your right leg, whether it's the shin below the knee, or if you can bring it up above the knee by grabbing it, whatever you need to do. And then you can bring your hands into to your, towards your hips or bring them into prayer. Prayer allows um, your heart to lift towards your thumbs a little more. So as you're finding your balance here, you're finding the Tadasana, the mountain pose um, qualities in the right foot. And then in the left leg, you should be pressing that knee back and down actively, actively engaging the thigh, the hamstrings and quadriceps as you press the knee back and down. Try not to let the right hip jut out. Keep pressing that inwards for this little early balance pose. Maybe you set your eyes on a drishti or a focal point, something that's not moving, that's right in front of you. Let's lift the left knee, bring it forward, and then let it come to the floor. Shake it out. Whew, feeling tight in that right leg. I've been biking a lot, so I'm sure that's a personal issue. <laughs> nice. Let's um, step into our Tadasana once more. Look down, make sure the feet are evenly together. And then we'll inhale to sweep the arms out and up, palms press overhead, gaze lifts, exhale, fold deeply in half for Uttanasana. Inhale halfway up, palms to shins, inner thighs pressing back, exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, and step it back to our downward facing dog. Lifting the hips, pressing through the palms of the hands. And then we'll inhale to lift the left leg up and back. And then exhale, step the foot between the thumbs. Lower the back knee, untuck the toes. Sweep the arms up forward and up by the ears. Finding your breath. Maybe continuing that ujjayi breath, the audible sound, like an ocean-like sound at the base of the throat, allowing that to guide you through these poses. Letting the breath guide the body rather than the mind guiding the body right now. Let the mind rest. Inhale, reach through the fingertips, spinning the triceps towards the ears and the biceps going outward. On your next exhale, twist to the left, bringing the right arm forward, left arm behind us, lifting through the heart, not sinking the into that left hip, pressing it away as you keep pressing the left shin forward. And if you'd like, you can drop that left arm behind you and lift the right arm up. Good. 
getting a lot of twists in today. And then we'll lift our torso back up, cut through the air with the left arm, and then lift the up by and frame the ears. Let's exhale to lower the hands, frame the front foot, tuck the back toes, lift that right knee, and then scoot that leg forward a bit. Again, about three, three and a half feet between the, uh, the left foot. Lengthen the left knee, lengthen the leg long, Pivot your right toes so that they're going outward, they're not going forward. And then come to, um, you can come to blocks if you'd like, I should have mentioned that before, to your fingertips and just fold over that left leg. Tucking the chin, endeavoring the nose to reach towards the shin. Taking deep inhales. And lengthen your exhales. Tilt that right hip forward, left hip back. Feel the hamstrings open up. Good morning, hamstrings. And then we'll lift our head up, lift our heart up a little bit. Start to pour weight in that left foot and then bring yourself all the way up to stand, dragging that right foot with you and then holding onto the foot or ankle with the right hand. You can grab inner foot or outer foot. Either way, you want your right arm to open up. You want the, the armpit to open. Nice. Again, try to find that drishti, drishti, focal point, a non-moving focal point that you can focus on that's not moving. <laughs> I feel like I just said that three times in different ways. <laughs> Pull your heel of the foot towards your butt. Roll out the leg, roll out the hip. Nice. And then navel to spine, really stick with the core here. We'll lift the right knee up and then place the, the right sole of the foot somewhere on the left leg, coming into this tree pose. Hands into prayer or gather hands at the hips. Press the sole of the foot into the leg, but also press the leg into the foot and then press that right knee back and down, lifting through the heart. Finding qualities of Tadasana in the left leg. Try to unclench the buttocks, relax your face, relax your jaw. Really sticking with the core here. Try to feel the pelvis lift, navel to spine. Then we'll release the foot off the leg, lift the right leg, right knee towards the chest, and then let it go, shake it out. Whew. From here, um, we're gonna stay standing and we're gonna face whatever side, face the long side of your mat. I'm facing my left side and I'm gonna step um, my feet out wide so that they're wider than um, my hips. My toes are facing outward. Toes are facing out. And hands gather at the hips. And then we're gonna bend both knees and slide the hands down the thighs so that our hands are now resting on our thighs. Lift the heart up as you sink a little, sink your buttocks a little deeper sink your hips a little lower and bend at the knees, lift the heart, and then we're gonna take it slow. We're gonna exhale, bend the right shoulder towards the left knee, inhale, come back up, keeping the legs bent. Exhale, left shoulder towards right knee, inhale, back up. Exhale, right shoulder to left knee, inhale, back up. 
exhale, left shoulder to right knee. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, back up, keeping, let the thighs burn, keep the knees bent. Right shoulder, the left knee. Inhale up, left shoulder to right knee. Inhale, back up, and then we'll sweep the arms up, lengthen the legs, Whew. feel it burn. Then exhale, sweep the arms behind us, interlace your fingers um, at your low back. And then we're gonna pivot on our heels of our feet and spin the toes inward. We might need to, I know I need to heel toe my feet a little outward a bit, and then I'm gonna bring, come up to pigeon toed. Press the knuckles away from you. Press the knuckles down, beam the heart up, puff out the armpits, and then exhale, slowly fold forward into a wide-legged forward fold. Let the knuckles stretch towards the sky, if you can bring them above your head. Feel the opening in the shoulders. Maybe you sway back and forth, feeling the opening um, into your hips. Whatever gets you going there. One more breath with the hands like this. And then exhale, release the hands to the mat. Coming to Prasarita Padottanasana A. Why? Slide like in forward fold. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Let's lift halfway up, coming to the fingertips. And then we'll pivot the right foot forward so the toes are facing forward. Bend the right knee and start to walk your hands to frame that foot and allowing the left heel to lift. And then we're gonna step it forward so the left foot meets the right and just fold. Take your, so heel till your feet about hip width distance apart. Take your index finger and your uh, middle finger, so your peace fingers, and wrap them around your big toe. We'll lift the heart, lengthen the arms about, and then lift halfway up. And then finding, maintaining that length in the spine, find your hips and fold deeply in half. So fold, let your torso come, your heart come towards your thighs. Elbows can splay out wide. You're pulling your toes with your fingers as your toes try to ground your fingers. So again, opposites always find the tension. Opposites find the stretch. Feeling the hamstrings here, pulling your toes toward your face. Breathing here in Pado Gustasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, release your fingers, and then fold. Heel toe your feet closer together. And then we're going to bend the knees, sink the hips, sweep the arms up by the ears, coming. coming all the way down to sit, using that core, using the strength of the thighs. Oh, I'm sorry, did that, something happen? Come to sit on your butt. And then we'll lengthen the legs out long in front of us. Flexing the feet, pointing the toes towards our face. Let's inhale to sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, fold forward. Retrieving your feet, holding on to your feet, holding on to your ankles or shins. Flexing your feet. So making this an active pose at first. Feeling the stretch in the low back. Letting the spine just elongate. And then feeling the back of the legs open. One more breath here. Then 
you can stop flexing your feet, let go of whatever you're holding on to, let your arms just fall out to the side, and keep, curl your spine, and just fold. Maybe you notice, maybe you take this time to notice the difference you felt with the passive versus active stretching. Take notes on what you felt, no judgment, don't add, you know, I like this one better than the other. Just notice where sensation is being felt. Let's tuck the chin and peel ourselves up. And then we're gonna scoot our butt forward, bend the knees, soles of the feet to the mat, and then lie our backs down. So let's do a couple back bends, a couple active back bends. So, uh, slide the feet about hip width distance apart. Let the heels come towards the glutes. Allow the arms to stretch along by your side, long by your side. Maybe you can brush your heels of your feet with your toes or your fingers. Ground through the feet, ground through the palms of the hand, and then inhale to lift the hips up. Coming into Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose. Feel like you have a block between your knees. Press your knees together. Unclench your buttocks, and then maybe you walk your shoulders beneath your heart and interlace your fingers beneath your low back. Lifting your hips a little higher. Heart rises to the chin. And exhale, come all the way back down. <sighs> Moving your hands out of the way. Let your feet go wide and just windshield wiper your knees. Hmm. We'll walk our feet back beneath our knees, hip width distance apart. Bring our palms of the bring our palms to the mat as well. Pour weight into the feet, our palms, and then inhale to lift the hips. Walk the shoulder blades to cradle the heart. Press the thighs towards each other, unclench your buttocks, and lift your hips a little higher. Pressing the shins forward, keep lifting, keep lifting. Then exhale from the top of the spine to the bottom, lower. Widen your feet as wide as the mat. And then windshield wiper your knees. And then um, stay where you are. If you have a block close by, I hope you do. We'll slide a block on um, its medium height. I feel like I gave you the wrong height earlier now and I'm looking at it. On the medium height, slide it beneath your sacrum. So right between your low back and um, that flat part between your low back and your tailbone. Let your arms come um, alongside your body or out at like a T. It might feel better to come out like a T or like a gold pose. You can keep your legs bent or stretch your legs long. That, that will give you a little more of an intense back bend. But in the supported bridge, you might like your knees bent. And then it depends on how you feel today. So you have a couple bus stops. You can stay here, the knees bent, and a supported bridge. You can have your legs out long with the block beneath your sacrum. Or if you want to come to a supported shoulder stand, you're more than welcome. You can come later. You can stay where you are and then lift your legs straight up to the sky. Where, whatever you'd like to do. This is another passive inversion like downward facing dog. You can flex your feet, point your toes. Get your, give your feet a break. <laughs> Let the blood rush down towards your hip, hips. Maybe you feel the slightest sensation of energy flowing in different directions because you don't usually come into this pose. 
whatever you'd like to do. We'll be here for a couple moments. You can take a couple different poses. Just keep breathing. Allow the awareness to dance at your heart. Allow the awareness to remain here. wherever you are, continue to train your attention to this moment right here, right now. Try not to think of what you're going to eat for lunch later, what you're going to get done this week, what accomplishments you have. And stay out of the weekend, whatever you did, try to, try to stay right here, right now. And by doing that, that's when you continue to think of your breath and stay with your breath. Watch the inhales enter your body through the crown of your head. Watch the exhales then flow through your body, wash over and refresh any organ, every organ. If your feet are lifted, yes, you can slowly start to bring them down, grounding the sole of the foot. And then we'll stay on our backs. You can press the, lift your hips, pressing into the feet, and then take that block out of where it is, away from the sacrum. Place it off to the side. And then we'll have, lengthen the left leg long, and then bend the right knee in towards the chest. Hold on to that knee. Maybe you hold on to the shin and just uh, swivel the hip back and forth. And then we'll take our left hand and guide the, le the right knee across the body, coming into a supine twist. You can bend the left leg if that feels good for you. But make sure that right shoulder is grounded rather than making sure the right knee is grounded and then let the right arm come out to a T or like a half gold post. And you can send the gaze to the sky or over the right shoulder. Coming into Jatara Parivartasana. Feeling this twist coming from the upper back, but feeling it slightly in the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine doesn't twist as much as the thoracic or the cervical, but sometimes it feels good to get in the, you know, the top of the lumbar. Let's inhale to lift our right leg back up, bringing the knee towards the chest. And then keeping the, the left leg long on the mat, let's lift the right leg, lengthen that, and then um, bring the, like the sole of the foot, like you're stepping onto the ceiling with the right foot. Cannot get that out right. <laughs> Lengthen that leg, hold on to the right thigh. And maybe you can start to walk your hands up your right leg, keeping your shoulders grounded. Start to pull that right leg towards you slightly in a nice way. <laughs> Pulling it towards you, feeling a little stretch. Flexing the foot, pointing the toes. As you pull, this time, actively press away with your right foot. As you're pulling, <laughs> my cat saying hi to you. As you're pulling your leg towards you, press the leg away. And now stop doing that and just pull the leg towards you. And then we'll take this foot. If you have a strap, that'd be a great time to pull it out. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that. but. I don't, I'm not using a strap. And then we'll keep lengthening our right leg and then 
with the right hand, bring the le right leg outside. So we're gonna, yeah, exactly. Stretching that inner thigh here. Let the right leg just kind of go wherever it goes, using the right hand, the right arm as a support. And then we'll lift the leg back up, you switch it. So use the um, left arm to bring the right, uh, the right leg over the body, just for a, a little out, outer hip stretch. And then let's come back up and let the right leg fall back to the mat. So both legs are out long. Relax, feel how that feels. Maybe your right leg feels longer than your left leg right now. And then let's keep the right leg um, lengthened on the mat and bend the left knee towards the chest. Hug the knee, hug the shin, roll out the hip. Once you've had enough of that, use the right hand to guide the knee across the body, coming into a twist. Let the left arm lengthen out as it to a T or like a half gold post. Send your gaze over your left shoulder or to the sky. Can bend that right leg if it feels good. Again, you wanna ground the shoulder rather than grounding the knee. If you can do both, you're a rock star, but you're also a rock star if you just have the left shoulder grounded. I remember being in the studio and practicing with the other teachers. And whenever we came to this pose, I never wanted it to end. <laughs> Let's start to lift the left knee back towards the chest. Lengthen the leg, setting the sole of the foot to the sky. Flex the foot, point the toes. Walk your hands up the leg and start to pull the leg towards you. So your toes are coming towards your feet. Now as you pull towards your, your leg towards you, press the leg away from you. Feeling the opposites. Pull, press. Stop pressing with the leg and start pull, keep pulling with your arms, your leg towards your face. Maybe you come a little further, maybe you feel it opening up a little more. And then we'll take our left leg into the left hand and bring the left leg out wide. Letting it go wherever it goes. I have a good stool. This is great. I can rest my foot on. Just feeling an opening in the inner thigh. Kind of in the way, actually. Feeling what you feel. Notice, ask questions. No judgment. Lift that left leg back up. Swap hands, and then let the leg come across the body. Feel the outer hip stretch. It's not going to come far. Then let's lift the leg back up. Lower the leg. Let's see. We have the time for You know what? Let's just come into our final resting pose. Shavasana. So layer up how you'd like. Um, maybe pull a blanket over you. Maybe roll a blanket beneath your knees just to elevate your knees higher than your hips. Or cradle, a, make a pillow, excuse me, make a pillow and place it beneath your head. Wherever you are, find this surrender, find this um, receptivity to what you just accomplished, what you just did. 
So if you're laying there, let's squeeze our eyes closed, squeeze our hands into a fist, tighten your feet, clench your feet, clench everything, take a big inhale, and then exhale, sigh, release it all, let it all go, truly sink into the earth here. <sighs> letting go of any intention, letting go of any work, letting the eyebrows fly across the forehead, let the jaw just relax, maybe the mouth slightly open, allow your body to surrender and be cuddled by Mother Earth.
Begin to deepen your breath. Coming back to now, coming back to this moment. Start to wiggle any toes, move any wrists or ankles. Reach your arms up and over your head for a good Monday morning stretch. And then bend one knee into the chest to meet the other. Roll over to your right side. And then begin to build your way up to sit. You could keep your eyes closed, it'd be awesome. You'll have a slight gaze. We'll come to sit in a cross-legged position. Let your palms just fall where they do on your thighs. And then we'll roll our shoulders up, back, and down. Let's gather our hands at heart center. Lift our heart, bow our heads. Let's be thankful for this moment together. Be thankful for this vehicle, this body that we were born into. Thankful that our spirit chose this vehicle. Be thankful for being here, being present, being able to move the way we did today. It's something that we truly take for granted. Put the base of our thumbs to our third eye. Lean our head back. Receive any love, light, gratitude, and wisdom this day might offer us. And then exhale to fold forward, grounding our fingertips, sealing in our practice. Namaste.